Almighty, y'all pray with me. Father, we thank you for this evening, and we do long for you to mold us into your image, to help us to live the way that you have designed for us to live. And Lord, help us to be set free by the truth that you say will give us life to the fullest measure. Lord, I pray that uh, tonight that you will open our minds, Lord, perhaps more importantly, that you will open our hearts, and Lord, that from the inside out, everything will be transformed into your image. We pray, Lord, that tonight we take the next step into that identity as we descend into servanthood and into the reflection of the person of Christ. Lord, we pray these things in his name, the saving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, it is sure good to see you guys. It's a little bit hard to see you tonight because I've got glasses on. I don't know if I'm trying to be smarter than usual or what. Well, I don't know. Or look smarter, at least. I'm not trying to be smarter than usual. That's a lost cause. Lost that a long time ago. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, so I've got this sty in my eye. Anybody ever had a sty before? It's just really not cool. It's gross and nasty and uncomfortable and it's just not okay and you know the Lord's sense of humor never ceases to amaze me because we started into this new series abnormal and this is certainly something that you'll come to find out um, that as we as we kind of enter into this this new series uh, pot kettle black and I'll just leave you with that little teaser and then in just a moment we'll come back to that uh, guys it's ha Halloween weekend anybody looking forward to trick-or-treating tomorrow man you gotta be more excited than that it's candy I mean, you gotta get to get candy and you gotta have a good time together. It's super fun. And uh, man, I tell you, you know, Halloween is one of those times that, that Christians get a little weird, don't they? Yeah, Christians get a little bit weird when it comes to Halloween, you know, because we feel like it's supposed to be like, I, I don't know, I, I think we've missed, we've missed the, uh, the foundation of why Halloween even exists. And it's not about worshiping Satan or anything like that, folks. It's all about the fact that all of these saints that went before us, they all died because all living things die, right? Well, all of those that have gone before us, they were buried and put into the ground. And so on the eve of what is known as All Saints Day, which is the day that we celebrate, those that have gone before us, those that, those that as Hebrews tells us are, are in the Colosseum, cheering on those that are to follow in this life on this earth, we celebrate here on this earth all of those who've lived a life that have reflected Jesus Christ at an amazing level. And we celebrate them on the eve of All Saints Day, known as Hallow's Eve. Which you can see how that got translated as time went on. And of course there are folks that take it out of context. But everybody, can we please claim what tomorrow is? It's why, did you know, I mean, the early church, they dressed up as dead people. They dressed up and they went out in the streets and they walked the streets and they did the things that we do today. And it wasn't a satanic moment of worship. It simply was them saying, man, those, those who have gone before us, we're going to dress as them and we're going to, to give honor to those who've gone before that we are following in their footsteps. And we too want to live a life that is a reflection of the person of Jesus like they did. And so we get an opportunity. And so as they did uh, centuries ago, millennia ago, uh, as they did, we, uh, uh, we too get to enjoy this time of Halloween. And we too get to dress up. And we too get to do kind of crazy things. And we do get to, to have some, some abnormal things. And so I thought I'd try something out this last week. Anybody ever seen the Jimmy Fallon show? Yes. Do you like Jimmy Fallon? I am such a fan of Jimmy Fallon in the show. He's got amazing writers that make him amazingly funny. I think he's probably funny just in and of himself. But it's amazing to see what happens. So I, I thought, okay, so you know that, that time of the, of the show where he says, you know, on Wednesdays I send out this tweet. And, uh, and, and so and I just thought that I'd get some feedback from you guys. You know, you guys are ever on Twitter, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So I thought, you know, I'm going to give this a shot. And so I tweeted out. What are some abnormal or strange practices, maybe weird costumes that you've seen through the years? And I just thought I'd find out what response I got. Within 20 minutes, it was a worldwide trending topic. Nope. Not really. <laughs> I got like 10. Hey, I was pretty excited about 10, to be honest with you. 
most of which came through Facebook, which I now understand because our student pastor, that's where all the old people hang out. And so I've lost every little vein of cool that I've ever gotten, okay, or that I've ever had. And so anyway, so all of us old people, we're just going to kind of all gather together and be okay and have a little warm moment of, of abnormal and strange stories. So this gal here, Julie Corey, uh, she wrote back, she said, There's a man in his 30s, he rang our bell at about 9 p.m. I opened the door, saw no kids with him. He held up a plastic company and said, Trick or treat. You can laugh, it's okay everybody, it's okay. I replied, I don't think so. He shrugged his shoulders and said, Thought I'd give it a shot. I locked the door right after that one. Pretty creepy. We have the, this is Laura Houck, who said that years ago, there used to be a manja pizza on Anderson Lane. They hired me to make a pumpkin costume for the Zilla, which is a dinosaur apparently. It was 10 feet, yeah, this is amazing to me. 10 feet tall, had a 180 inch waist. Ah, get it. It took 20 yards of orange fabric and he was stuffed with plastic bags. That is a lot of plastic bags. Is it not? It's a lot. I had to get a couple of guys on ladders to put the costume on. It was a huge project and took lots of time. And she was picking up orange thread for months. That is bizarre. So then we have our beloved Desiree. And she said when she was three, now this, I tell you, is genius. When she was three, she said, my dad took me trick-or-treating in a torrential downpour. Everyone gave me all their candy because no one bothered to come out. <laughs> Irony, I was a black cat. I don't know what to do with the last phrase there, but I think it's genius. We should pray for rain on Halloween. Should we not? Because everybody's loaded up and they don't want it in their house. And so, rain is the way to go. Matt Morton, he, uh, he sent in, he said, I dressed up. I love it. If you know Matt Morton, him dressed as a California Razor just makes me smile so big, I can hardly even stand it. But he said, I dressed up like a California Razor when I was fit, uh, in fifth or sixth grade for a pep rally. The whole class did, we used trash bags. And so, so I asked him, I said, did you do the little dance? You guys remember the dance? You know, I'm not doing it, don't worry. Uh, I'm not doing it, but you remember the dance if you remember? Uh, and I asked him if, he, if they did the dance, and he definitely said the whole class all together at one time did the California race and dance. You young people, ask the old people what that was. Uh, Christy Becker, she says this one, mom of the century. Are you ready? When I was in fourth grade, we got to wear our costumes to school for the day. Not anymore, uh, but, but back in the day, this old. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I dressed up, she said, as a mummy, and her mom cut up white sheets and wrapped and fastened every single strip on me. Man, that's awesome. So not only did she, but her mom also won the class costume contest, and they lived in West Texas. It snowed that Halloween, which is a bit on the abnormal side. And then I've got a friend, uh, Greg Seeley, uh, and he said, uh, uh, my daughter asked me about the fall festival at church. I told her that's what churches call Halloween parties. <laughs> and I just love that. I love that, love that, love that. I'm so grateful for his humor, uh, for sure, by any means. So, anyway, just a little bit of fun uh, as we get started this evening and starting this new series that we are calling Abnormal. Guys, as Christ followers, we know that we're called to live a life that is different, right? We're called to live a, live a life that is simply not normal. It's apart from the norms of the world. Uh, and, and we believe this so much that we, it's one of our core values as a church. One of our core values is to fight normal. It's something that, that was coined years ago, and we're so grateful. In fact, we're really proud of this, to fight the norms not only of the culture in which we live, that says the certain way that we're supposed to live for happiness. We also want to fight the norms of the church culture of hypocrisy and all that kind of stuff. We want to fight the norms of what people think, either when they think of life outside of Christ or even some that think um, about what it means to follow Christ. So, so this is what our series is about, is fighting normal. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, here it is. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road or the path that leads to destruction. Many enter through it. The small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now guys and gals, growing up, I was very concerned with what other people thought about me. I was very concerned about the clothes that I wore, the words that I spoke, 
the way that I um, was either accepted or rejected by people. I was very concerned about these things, and I was kind of all about normal, if you really get down to it. My mom, on the other hand, true to mom form, my mom thought I was like this trendsetter and everything, and uh, she's so sweet, she still tells me today, Dang, you're just a trendsetter. When you're growing up, you're just a trendsetter. You get your hair cut, and other guys will get their hair cut the same way. And, you do this, that, uh, you wear these, get these kind of shoes, and little did my mom know that I just knew people who had these things, I would choose those things, and then other people would see these other people, not me, doing these, and they would then follow suit. It had nothing to do with me being a trendsetter, but I appreciate my mama. She's proud of me. I love that. I pursued normal, guys. I wanted to fit in. But you know what I've discovered through the years? Discover that normal is not something that works. It's not something that's working in our world. I mean, when we think about what normal is, and we take a snapshot of 21st century normal, here it is. Overwhelmed. Rushed everywhere we go. Normal is stress and anxiety. Hence the uh, sty. This is how my body exudes stress, I guess, apparently. Normal is broke, it's debt, it's relational tension, it's divorce. Normal is living without direction, not having a clue where we're going. Normal is working for a paycheck in a job that we don't like. That's normal. Normal is multiple partners. Normal is a life that is filled with guilt, shame, regret. This is normal in our world. Well, guys and guys, there's a pastor that once said, he said these words, he said, if you want what normal people have, do what normal people do. But if we look at scripture here, we can see that if you want what few people have, do what few people do. And so we've got to fight the norms. Because these norms are just not okay. And the nice thing for you guys tonight is as you listen to all of these words, please don't feel like you're alone in this. Because as I stand before you tonight, I am trying to figure out how to offload some of the schedule, how to offload some of the stress, how to say no to some really good things so that I can say yes to the very best things. So you're not alone. We're all in this thing together. So please don't feel like uh, anything other than let's just kind of get it straight together. First Peter 1.16 says, Be holy because I am holy. This is what we're called to do. Be holy. Which in layman's terms today means be set apart because I am set apart. We want to follow the example of Jesus. We want to follow His Father, God the Father. And we want His Spirit to guide us to a life of holiness. Now the crazy thing is, this whole being set apart, the Bible teaches us the most abnormal things you can ever imagine, right? Right? I mean, those of you that have spent much time in Scripture, aren't there some really bizarre teachings from Jesus? I mean, to, to name a few, I mean, uh, the first will be last. That's just a weird thing to hear, isn't it? If you just take it out of context, the first will be last. The last will be first, right? You want to be great, become the least. That's just kind of abnormal. It's just it's strange teachings. If you want to be great, serve people. You want to find your life, lose it. That's a teaching we find in Scripture. Scripture says, don't commit adultery. And then we look in the New Testament where it says, don't even look at a woman lustfully, for by doing so, you are committing adultery. This is kind of an abnormal, abnormal teaching. Scripture says that if somebody wrongs you, you are to forgive them. That's a bit abnormal, but it gets even better because how many times are we supposed to forgive them? Ten? 20, 30, 50, 60? How many times are we, we taught to forgive? 70 times 7, which I guess that means once we get to 490. At 491, we say, ah, you're cut off. Sorry. No, we know that that's not what this means. It simply means that we forgive as Christ has forgiven us. As God the Father has forgiven us, we perpetually forgive. That is an abnormal teaching. We know that. Well, I will tell you guys, this, this life of abnormality, um, I gave up being cool a long time ago. 
if you really get down to it, and it was only confirmed this last week by my little Twitter experiment. Uh, and uh, and so, 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 one thing I'm so grateful for, and I mean this in the most loving way that I possibly can, my wife has really helped us be abnormal in a lot of ways, and I really mean that. Uh, she has led our family in a remarkable way <laughs> into some abnormal avenues. And uh, I'm grateful for her, but, but she's not alone in that. I've led us down some, some very abnormal pathways as well. You know, I remember sitting in seminary in a class looking at those guys who start churches. Looking at those guys who are called the church planters. And I remember thinking, that's a weird bunch of guys and gals. Very, very strange. Uh, and, uh, and, and then come to find out, you know, a decade later, uh, here I am, right? You know, and actually 16 years later, here I am. But a decade later, I was finding myself doing this very abnormal thing um, and being a part of this strange bunch. Rachel and I have committed to living a life that is debt-free. Uh, that's a very abnormal way of living life. We've committed to living a life that is debt-free uh, other than our house, and we pay cash for everything, uh, or a debit card uh, that goes straight out of the checking account. We pay, we pay for things um, on a cash basis. Rachel still to this day uses envelopes uh, that have every single little thing that she's going to spend through the two-week period of time. And uh, she still carries those envelopes. I don't carry the envelopes, but she manages more of our budget than I do. And so, uh, and so it, it, it's fitting that she has that. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're a little abnormal in that my bride is a full-time mom. Uh, and uh, we, we've entered into this strange, abnormal world of foster care. Uh, and this has been years in the making. Uh, we even uh, are so abnormal that we breed this breed of dog called Golden Doodles. And uh, if you don't know what a golden doodle is, it, it is a cross between a golden retriever, uber cool dog, and a poodle, uber not cool dog. But it makes a mediocre cool dog, and people will buy them, so we breed them. So there you go, right? We've committed to an abnormal life. We say yes to some things that, quite frankly, ourselves say that we really don't want to say yes to. And, uh, and we find ourselves living a life that's a little bit more challenging than we, than we perhaps uh, desire for it to be. Uh, but we're grateful for it. Very, very grateful. I don't tell you this uh, so that either, one, you, you go, what, that's cool, or, or two, you go, you know what, maybe I need to just do something similar. The cool thing about the way God created us is that, that there's not just one way to be abnormal. There's not just one way to be strange. And God has a very custom strange for you and a very custom abnormality for you and we can all be abnormal together because if we all be abnormal doing the same abnormal things we all become normal don't we and so we got to all kind of have our own strain of abnormal and the, that's a, the neat thing is that this is what god has for us the thing that we want to do is not copy what somebody else does what we want to do is we want to learn how abnormal people think we want to look at people who are living a life that reflects Jesus in such a way that it's kind of weird and kind of strange, but we kind of go, yeah, I need to know how you think. Because isn't it true that abnormal people don't think like normal people? Isn't that true? It's very true. It's very, very true. Romans 12, 2 says, don't live any longer the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. And then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. Now, as if that paraphrastic translation wasn't paraphrastic enough, I'm going to go to one that's even more story form, which is the message in Romans 12, chapter, or chapter 12, verse 2. It says it this way. This is really good. This one I'm reading is really, really good. Because it gives us a broad stroke. It says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Oh, man, right? Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Because guys and gals, what you think determines what you become. The way that you think, it determines what you become. When you look at time, and you're beginning to think, can or should I say yes to everything that I possibly can say yes to? We know that living an abnormal life means that we can actually accomplish more that matters by doing less. 
because we begin to say no to the good things so that we say yes to the very best things. And you'll notice there's a very important phrase in there. We can do more that matters. I'm not saying you can do more by doing less. I'm just saying you can do more that matters by saying no to the good things so that you can say yes to the best. When it comes to our money, did you realize that poor people, when they think of, about money, they're thinking on a day-by-day -day basis? They're thinking on a week-to-week -week basis. Did you realize that? It's very important. This is not a negative thing. It just is what it is. Poor people think about money day-by-day -day or paycheck-to-paycheck. Did you realize that people with money generally think about money month-to-month -month or year-to-year? -year? Or even more importantly and, and greater in the, in the spectrum, generation-to-generation? Generation? See... That's strange, is it not? And none of us in this room, there's nobody that's in this room that is independently wealthy. We are not a church full of deep pockets. It is important for us to think about money the way that God has intended for it to be thought about, which is different than the world that we live in tells us to think about it. Same thing is true when it comes to relationships. Our world says, Man, you should practice being married before you're actually married. You should go ahead and live together. Test it out a little bit. If things don't work, then you can just call it quits before you've sealed the deal and then you get a bunch of legal mess to deal with. Well, the problem is, is that with that mentality, we know that there is a 1 in 10 chance that somebody that lives together before they are married is going to live a life that continues to be married until death do them part. Nine times out of ten, it's going to end in divorce. It's going to be trouble. That's normal. That is the norm for the world that we live in. 1 Peter 1.16 says, Be holy because I'm holy. Live a life that is set apart because I am set apart. And so what this means is, guys, don't live like normal people. It's not working. Normal is not working on our planet. It's just not. Our truth tonight is the key truth. You get nothing else. This should give us solace for all of us really bizarre people, but abnormal is better. This is it. When you look at life and you think about abnormal is better. And I will tell you that it's really a, a strange thing. And many of you have lived a very similar path because we're full of, we're a church that's kind of full of bizarre people. And we're kind of bizarre in the fact that we love Jesus at the level we love Jesus. And we're willing to lay our lives down at a level that is just really kind of mind-blowing. But isn't it true that the more and more we pursue Christ, the more abnormal we become? Isn't that the truth? The more and more and more, in a God kind of way, right? The more and more and more we pursue Christ, the more abnormal we become. Last week I was talking to Ren. Uh, Ren is our student pastor, for, for those of you that don't know. Uh, we were at lunch last week, and in a very rare moment where we got to have lunch across the table from each other, just the two of us. And, uh, and it, was, it was really cool because we were kind of reminiscing, and we were taking things way back to when he was like in seventh and eighth grade. And, uh, and I was his student pastor at the time. And, uh, and so we got to talk about, you know, all the fun that we had and all the trips and all the missions that we did and all the, just kind of, all that as I was kind of cutting my teeth in ministry and all that kind of stuff. And as we were, we were kind of looking back with these great, you know, I was telling him about all of the magnificent feelings, actually. Just this elation, because it was a period of time that, to be perfectly honest with you, everything we did, it just worked. I think it's because the Lord just was like, man, this poor little guy, it's going to crush him if everything doesn't work. So I'm just going to help him out here. Um, but, and so, so I appreciate the Lord's grace in that. But it is so true because it was like everything we did, it just worked. All of the things that we went on, all of the, the, the events that we held and all this stuff, it just was a, it was a beautiful time. And I remember these moments of just, man, if I could do this and this night never end, I'd be good. Because the feelings that I was getting inside, they were so amazing. Ren asked me the questions last week. He said, so how many times do you get those feelings now? Now before you go feeling sorry for me, okay? Because I don't have those feelings very often. In fact, it's very rare that those feelings occur in me now. Again, before you start feeling sad for me, 
the way I read scripture and I think about Jesus and I look at Jesus' life, I'm not sure how many times Jesus, in his walk on this earth, had a bunch of warm fuzzies inside of him. Did he not carry the weight of the world on his shoulders? He lived a life that was set apart. And I'm going to tell you, there was some great ministry that was done back in the day. And I'm, it was in spite of me, in spite of our team, which was a magnificent team, by the way. But it was in spite of all of that. Because you want to know what I was concerned about more than anything else? Numbers. People thinking I was cool as a student pastor. You know what I was thought, thinking about more than anything else? Putting on the show so I could draw the crowd so that we'd have the biggest student ministry in the, in the town. And we did. And it was a phenomenal show. We did a great job. Now I'm going to tell you, again, there was great ministry done. And I know that that was in spite of me. And I am grateful for that. I'm grateful for the provision of the Lord there. But I will tell you, I am much less concerned about the number of butts in the seats on a Sunday morning or on a Sunday night than I have ever been. We never count anymore. Did you know that? We stopped that years ago. Because we didn't want to be guilty of being kind of like a lot of churches where every time you get together with somebody else, what's the first question you get asked? How many people you got, right? I love being able to say, I don't really know. I know how many chairs we set up, but I don't really know how many people. I kind of like that. I kind of like living this life that I'd much rather be in the trenches alongside somebody else who's going through a hard time and me knowing it, even though it's so hard to walk with somebody through a troubling time. I would much rather be there than kind of living this life that's not reality, but it sure looks good any day. Guys and gals, abnormal is better. The more and more I pursue Christ, the more and more abnormal I become. Because if you really get down to it, everybody, I'm really tired of normal. I'm going to go on a little rant here, if you'll just go with me. I am really sick and tired of people being overwhelmed. I am sick and tired of people being broke. I am tired of people being miserable. I am sick of normal Christianity. I am sick of people attending church on a Sunday and living like hell the rest of the week. I am sick and tired of normal. I hope that you're getting sick and tired of normal because it's not working. I am sick and tired of this safe church, safe life, Pray a prayer, make sure your eternity is secure, but nothing changes about life. I'm sick of that. I am tired of normal. We're called to live a holy life. We're called to live a life that is set apart. We're told this, be holy because I am holy. The problem is, is that we're living a life on this earth and we've got it wrong. We're, for some reason, there's this thought process that, that like this earth is, we're supposed to have happiness here. We're supposed to find all of our happiness here. <laughs> Truth is, look here, one chapter later after this proclamation of being holy because God is holy and Jesus is holy. <laughs> First Peter 2, 11 and 12. Dear friends, I urge you as ready aliens and strangers in the world. This is not our home. This is not where our eternal satisfaction is to be sought from. This is not where happiness is to be found. This is not where all of that is supposed to take place. I urge you as aliens and strangers to be really, really abnormal. Abstain from sinful desires. I am sick and tired. Are you not sick and tired of people making their own choices and then the consequences come and then they blame somebody else for their choices? Aren't you tired of that? It's, it's sickening, isn't it? 
Abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans, people who don't know Jesus, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, now get this, guys, you've probably misread this scripture for years and years and years. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they, when they look at you, they kind of go, why would you do that? That's really what this means. They look at you and go, wait, 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 wait. Why would you give all of that money away? Do you realize what you can do for yourself? I mean, whenever the world looks and says, they accuse you of, man, you, should, you deserve some me time. You should just go and do something for yourself. Forget serving your neighbor. Just go do something for yourself. It's not a matter of them kind of sitting here and like being hostile towards you. It's a matter of, in a, in, in a way that, that, they, that they do, them caring. And then saying, I'm confused. I don't get it. I actually want what's best for you right now. And I think what's best for you is to do something for yourself. Though the world does that, then they get the clear picture. They may see your good deeds and glorify God. Now here's the scary part, but they see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. Now we would really like for then to glorify God before the day He visits us, because on the day He visits us, it will be too late. But the truth is, is that that's going to happen to many people. That on the day He visits us, it's going to all of a sudden click and go, ah! Amber had a run. I don't understand why she lived her life that way, but she had a run. We're hopeful that folks will be able to see the way of life. And although they are confused, by the person that we are, it will be glaringly obvious that the person of Jesus is the motivation for why we are the Lord. And out of that, they discover the way to a life that is completely full. A life that is full of peace. A life that is full of the fruit of the Spirit. Where we get joy in the midst of all of the, the challenge. Where we can find ourselves full of joy regardless of what our circumstances are. And while we find ourselves choosing these, these choices, that quite frankly, everything in us wants to go another direction. We find ourselves not being able to go that other direction because we know that that is a direction that will take us to, to destruction. It will take us to a very hard end. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world, Abstain from sinful desires which ways war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Everybody, tomorrow's Halloween. And as you're walking up and down the streets of your neighborhood, I hope that you take the opportunity to get to know your neighbors. I hope you take the opportunity to have conversations with folks that you otherwise never would be able to. On a night that is supposed to be a night all about us where we want to go to somebody's house and get what we want from them, May it be a reminder every time we pass somebody that's, that's dressed as a skeleton or pass somebody, somebody that's dressed as a person of the dead, may it be a reminder of all the saints that have gone before us that have shown the way and have given us the path to live a life that is a reflection of Jesus Christ. May it be a reminder of that and may we glorify God in the way that we live our lives so much so that our kids are impacted for generation upon generation upon generation. You see, it is an awesome, awesome privilege to be abnormal. It's an awesome privilege to color outside the lines. It is an awesome privilege to live a life that reflects the person of Jesus. And I hope that we'll choose it. But by doing so, we find life. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this evening and we thank you for this time right now. And Lord, I pray that as we move into this time to respond, that Lord, we don't, we don't, we don't take these words lightly. And we don't look at the call that you've given us to be holy and take it for granted. Lord, I pray that you will, you will begin to stir in our, our hearts. Lord, that you will fan that flame that you started in us. Lord, that it will take fire and we will be perfectly fine with not being normal with not being the folks that, that when, when people 
are around us that we're perfectly fine not being the way they think we should be. But Lord, may we also not take this moment and think that we're not going to care about the person who's viewing the way we live our lives. Lord, please let them know we care deeply. But Lord, most importantly, may Christ in us be the hope of glory. May Christ in us be the hope that wipes away any cloudiness of who you are, God. That wipes away any smoke, anything that comes in between a person discovering the true Jesus. And Lord, may your spirit be our guide. May you be our rock, our fortress. May you be the ever-present help in time of trouble. And Lord, may we find life abundantly by living an atypical life. We pray these things in the saving name of Jesus. Amen.